How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, this is one of them videos where you really need to go get your shit. All right, give y'all you know a little time, get your little shit, and um, I'm today I'm having a little sip of um ginger ale, and I like to thank. Lisa Cabrera for sending me what she sent me and um, I feel like I have done some of my best detective work I learned some things because I'm always curious about many things now, anybody that's new to the true royal family or true royal I think I have done um, more videos on this coon than anybody in the world of social media. And um, I do have a, um, on the True Royal family, I have a playlist. You can just, you know, go in there and just enjoy thyself. Now I'm stalling, so you can go get your shit. That's why I be saying over here, on, the, on my two channels here, you don't know what you're gonna get. So it's good to have your shit on deck. But I give you enough stall time so you can put some ice on your drink or whatever. And all that. Because, you know, I'm taking a sip too. Quite interesting. The journey that I'm going to take the royal family on. Some things I didn't know. And I'm pretty sure somebody out there in the world of um, social media know. So, I've heard about the proud boys but i never went in depth about who is their leadership or anything i just assumed that they just a white supremacist group and um they watching their kingdom fall and um i have heard trump tell them to stand by but i did not know that there's some folks that look like you and I that um, is a part of these Proud Boys. Let me get another little sip of this. Because when I'm getting ready to take y'all on, I was like, oh, wait, really? This one of these types that you need to lean all up in it. So... There's some things that happen the very next day after uh, the election. And we know that um, Trump is all up in his feelings. Oh, Trump is all up in this because I put it all together, you know. And um, his lapdog had no problem demonstrating um his loyalty, really. So um, let's get into this first part of this video here. Okay, yeah, they got a little warning here and just take it all in, all right? Reading what you're reading too, because I'm not reading nothing. I'm going to speak core. I know y'all saying, what is going on? Oh, yeah, and I do have a bonus video to my royal family. So let's listen to a little over two minutes of this stuff right here. Check it out. Whoa, 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 hey! Black Lives Matter over here. Hey. Hey! Hey! Gotta help him. I'm bleeding. I know, but you gotta help him. <laughs> Y'all, we seen that the people who stabbed me were not just Black Lives Matter kids. They are Black Lives Matter kids, yes. But listen to me. These kids came out to do one thing and one thing only destroy 
let me tell you something right now. When we were walking, we were actually standing, sitting on a stool, and we were listening to Trump make an announcement about voter fraud, okay? We seen a old white man across the street in a suit, and he looked like he had just came from an election event. And as he was walking, okay, we seen three young black kids walk up on him and start to taunt him. And were basically, they were not physically attacking him, but they were verbally, just basically, they were about to attack him. Like literally, you guys, they were about to attack this man. So all of us see what's happening. We run over there to, um, we run over there to tell the kids to stop, leave the boy alone. I mean, leave the man alone. The kids grab us though and start attacking us. They grab us and start hitting us. So now in the video, you see me pulling the girl, trying to pull the girl off of my hair. She's grabbed my hair. I mean, these kids, and then one of the guys said, he said, yeah, this is what I was looking for. These kids came out to fight. All right. So let me put a stop to that quick as possible. So this, let me stop all of this. I don't want no nothing popping up. Let me see here. Let me, okay. So this is the t first time I've heard of this chick, Beverly, Betty. And when I was doing my research, she's one of their leaders, uh, Proud Boys. I'm like, what the fuck? Then I find out, and I forgot his name, this dude here, this black dude right here, y'all looking, I didn't forgot his name. Uh, he they leader too. And I'm like, damn. So, okay, she gets stabbed and, you know, black, oh, and this happened in D.C. Um, where Trump getting ready to get kicked out and keep Trump in there for a reason because I got a bonus video. So, um, there was a situation and I'm like, okay, that's a twist. So you all up in this. So in here, you can see a person can be heard crying. They stabbed Beverly Betty, referring to a pro-Trump. Okay. She's pro-Trump. Pro. Like I'm pro-black. Pro. Okay. Well, we got all kinds out here. So I'm like, damn. I done learned some things. You know. So she's a big supporter of the Proud Boys. And they... Like her so much, so called so much. I lost my way. Okay, so much. She's one of their um, leaders. Now I did my research on that, and I took that article down because I said I wasn't gonna really be reading anything. But she got herself in a situation and got stabbed, and here I go again, having to defend Black Lives Matter. Now, we know since Black Lives Matter first came out, this is the only thing that this ex-coon sheriff have harped on. Black Lives Matter is um, the most dangerous, violent group that ever hit the planet. They're not known for violence. They're not known for this at all. Now, keep on your frontal lobe that after the election, November 4th, that she got stabbed and some other folks got stabbed and they are part of uh, Proud Boys. Shit, I just thought it was just a bunch of white boys. You learn stuff. But see, I was doing my detective work because I was like, something ain't jiving here. Now, Lisa send me something and then it's all this. And what Lisa sent me, you will... See, that will be the bonus video. So I said, I got to do some more detective work. And how did I get here? I forgot. <laughs> I really did my role, family. But uh, let's listen to this uh, press conference here that's about a little over five minutes. Yeah, 
Okay, thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, I am Pete Newsham. I'm the Chief of Police for the Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I was very pleased uh, with the First Amendment assemblies uh, that we had in the District of Columbia last night. Uh, they were largely peaceful uh, in and around the White House. Uh, we did have a go-go truck that appear appeared on K Street for a period of time. Again, the folks uh, that assembled around the go-go go were peaceful. Uh, around 11.30, between 11.30 and midnight, we had a group uh, of about uh, close to 200 uh, that marched throughout the city. Uh, they were largely peaceful uh, in their march. Uh, at the end, uh, we had um, four arrests uh, at around 5 o'clock in the vicinity of where the uh, go-go truck was. We had one arrest uh, for crossing a police line. Uh, at about 9.50 p.m., uh, we had two arrests just outside of Lafayette Square. Uh, we had an assault with a dangerous weapon, a bat, uh, and interfering with the police. That was all one incident where there was two arrests. Uh, and about 2.30 a.m., uh, we had an incident up at the 4th District Police Station uh, where there was one arrest uh, for crossing a police line. Uh, the Metropolitan Police Department did not have to uh, deploy any munitions. Uh, we did not have to put on any riot gear. Uh, we have a proud history in the District of Columbia of facilitating First Amendment assemblies. We've had over a thousand uh, so far this year. Uh, and last night was an example uh, of a very peaceful demonstration uh, that, I, like I said, I'm very pleased about. Uh, I can talk a little bit about an incident that's had some attention uh, at around 2.25 a.m. at 14th and New York Avenue, Northwest. Uh, we had an assault with a dangerous weapon, a sharp object. Uh, we had three victims in that case, two adult males and an adult female. Uh, they all suffered non-life-threatening uh, injuries. Uh, they were taken to a local hospital. Uh, and we could take uh, any questions that you all have. Chief, what about this? What can you, else can you tell us? It's been said that they were proud boys. Exactly. Uh, we don't know the affiliations of the suspects or the victims in this case, so uh, that will be part of the invest investigation because I think, as you know, uh, if you assault someone because of their political affiliation, that would be a hate crime. Okay. So you're investigating it on that basis? Of a, of a we don't know. We don't have a motive at this point. It's much too early in the investigation. So, Chief, could I just follow up on that? So, do you have any suspects or do you have photos or anything you're releasing as far as that? There is video, so we're trying to put together a flyer right now with the best, the clearest images of some folks that were involved. Uh, so, as soon as we get have that, we'll get that out. And so, the video, you clearly hear the victims calling the suspects Black Lives Matter. That's how they're referring to them in their video and their subsequent videos from the hospital. Uh, at some point last night, some of your department told our news desk that, that in fact these were members of Proud Boy who, were, who said they were attacked by Black Lives Matter. So somebody told your... Yeah, I, I, the only thing I will say about that, you know, at 2.30 in the morning uh, when our officers are trying to gather information on the scene, that information is preliminary in nature. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, unfortunately, it changes. Uh, so all I can say is after more extensive investigation, uh, with the victims of the crime, we, we don't know uh, who they were affiliated with. And my last on this, are the victims cooperating with you? Have you interviewed them? And Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were able to interview the victims at the hospital. They've been very cooperative. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Chief, just real one, one quick question. Sorry about it. Keep coming back and forth. That's okay. Uh, I didn't go that far. <laughs> a lot of the organizers, they were saying that last night was literally day one of a week-long set of demonstrations. Uh, we saw last night tensions got a little high. There's a possibility that tensions can reach that level if not exceeded for the next few days. Uh, what's, what's the department, what, what is the city doing to make sure that they quell any potential uh, you know, acts of violence or what have you moving forward? Well, you know, I was around uh, a lot of the activity last night, and I uh, didn't feel like tensions were high. Uh, we had a couple of minor incidents that we were able to take care of uh, relatively quickly. Um, so our message is going to continue to be what it what it always is. You know, if you want to come out and you want to exercise your First Amendment right, Washington, D.C. is the place to be. We welcome you. Uh, if you want to come out here and you want to break the law, unfortunately, we have a responsibility uh, to ensure that doesn't happen, and, and we will take you into custody.
So can we ask about plans for tonight or parking restrictions, road closures? Sure, the parking restrictions will be the same as when we began uh, yesterday. So that's primarily uh, north of H Street uh, up to about K Street from 15th to 17th Street. That's All right. That's parking restrictions. Uh, we don't have any intention. Okay. So let's keep in mind this incident. In fact, I'll replay it to refresh your memory. It ain't that long. Let's see if we can get it going. Okay, here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Black Lives Matter over here. Hey. Okay, you catch that? Some sound like some drunk ass white woman say Black Lives Matter. Pick up on that. Now, we heard that in the news conference. Okay, press conference. Let's continue on. Hey! Hey! Gotta help him. I'm bleeding. I know, but you gotta help him. Okay. So, that's the Black Lives Matter they're claiming, which I know is full of shit. And... Now, this is what I want y'all to listen to next. I ain't got into the bonus yet, but just listen to this this right here. Okay, multiple Proud Boys stabbed in D.C. Knife attack. Okay, this right after the election. Listen to Trump. I don't know who the Proud Boys are. I mean, you'll have to give me a definition because I really don't know who they are. I can only say they have to stand down, let law enforcement do their work. Just stand by. Look, law enforcement will do their work. They're going to stand down. They have to stand down. Everybody, they have to stand. Whatever group you're talking about, let law enforcement do the work. Now, Antifa is a real problem because the problem is on the left. I've always denounced any form, any form, any form of any of that you have to denounce. But I also, Joe Biden, has to say something about... Okay. Trump is directly connected to Proud Boys. All right? He all up in this. Black Lives Matter ain't had nothing to do with this. But then he got his boy here that will do any and everything for him. What threw me off a bit is what you're getting ready to hear. So I'll just let it play thyself out and then I will explain myself. So now let's get into the bonus video. Now it may be a little choppy how I'm doing this, but I'm going to put it together like I always do real sweet. Like, okay. So at Trump rally, former sheriff calls for Proud Boy chapter in Wisconsin. So the ex sheriff goes to Wisconsin at this rally in Wisconsin, but the incident happened in DC. That's the part that's throwing me off. But anyhow, um, Trump, now this is on the 16th. What happened was on the 4th. Now, this is now we up to the present. Trump is making direct calls. He keeps saying, stand by, stand by. He being on call. We know what time it is with him. And um, so just, just listen to this um, little over two minute video. Some dangerous motherfuckers out here. That they issued Sir Paul four citations at $500 each for violating capacity limits, social distancing, and mask rules. But right before the rally shut down, we need proud boys. All right? That's coming out of Clark's mouth. Former Sheriff David Clark took the podium. <laughs> Defend your vote rally in Milwaukee Saturday. Trump supporters filled the parking lot outside Serb Hall. 
In attendance was former Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, who suggested there should be a Proud Boys chapter in Wisconsin, a far-right group with a history of violent confrontations. That's why I said we need a chapter of the Proud Boys here in Wisconsin, because they're the only ones with the courage, the only ones with the courage that get in the face of black Pro-free speech, pro-gun rights, glorifying the entrepreneur, venerating the housewife, reinstating a spirit of Western soul chauvinism. That's what the Proud Boys stand for. Eric Clark, stop for a minute. Shortly after Clark's comments, the health department shut down the rally because it violated the city's social distancing rules. Republican State Senator Chris Kapinga was also there. I asked Kapinga whether he agrees with Clark and his stance concerning the Proud Boys. In a statement, he said, quote, I did not hear him say that, and I don't know much about the Proud Boys. He went on to say that he was invited to the rally by the Republican Party of Milwaukee County to discuss voter fraud concerns. We pray every day that God does not turn his back on this nation. Sarah, you also reached out to the Republican Party of Milwaukee County. Have they responded? I did, Joyce. They're the ones who hosted the rally. I, I reached out for a statement and a representative over the phone told me that he did not want to provide a statement. Now, something to note, the Southern Poverty Law Center does list the Proud Boys as a hate group. You hear that? Now, this group that she's a part of, one of their leaders, this black guy, who I don't know his name, one of their leaders, I didn't know this. I just figured it was just bunch of white folks but you see how dangerous this is and see what, what what trump did was he made a call um to clark and he was in his feelings because his supporters you know three of them got stabbed all right and i guess or i'm assuming whoever was filming it Anytime you see anything go down with the Proud Boys, if they get in their ass whooped, just holler Black Lives Matter. Because we don't know if it was Black Lives Matter. And they're not known for that, you know. And I'm not even a supporter of Black Lives Matter. But I've had to defend Black Lives Matter and everything. But um, back here to um, this motherfucker. Dangerous. See, we got our own out here. Look like you and I. Now, you would look at this sister. She's a decent-looking sister. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you on? You up here trying to uphold white supremacy? They, they, they system is dying before their eyes, and you willing to die? You willing to get stabbed? You know? You feel like you're a part of something? You, you feel like you're a part of something for these redneck motherfuckers? And stuff? And then... He and his feelings, because he didn't, you know, got fired essentially and telling folks to stand by. So what Trump is doing is he, you know, I would call him a shot caller. You know, he do things for them, you know, and speaking cold when he's speaking. Now, he don't want to speak to nobody. But lo and behold, he spoke November 4th about this incident. You ain't the president no more, but you more concerned about this. And then you play like you don't know who the fuck that is. Trump is full of shit. This is a dangerous game they playing. But we need to know these things, my royal family. You know, we need to know these things. Please, all my videos, share them. Anything that you know, know you know, send me a link. I'll put out my email. I'm going to do my detective work. Isn't that ironic? Lisa sends me this. Because she know the damn nine times out of ten, if I see anything about this ex-ass sheriff who basically left a trail of shit where he was the sheriff at, then he comes back in town and leave another trail of shit. He a shit starter, you know. And did you notice folks ain't out there wearing their masks and you know, um, and I'm a supporter of all of that. If you don't want to wear your mask and all that kind of stuff and you on that death wish, I fully support you for being foolish. 
But Trump think he going to come back to what D.C. See, he messy. He a habitual liar. He don't give a damn about those 70, I think over 70 million people voted for him. That's a lot of people. He playing these little chinchy ass games. And then you got deranged motherfuckers like her messed up in the mind. This is another uh, uh, Candace Owens type. Just fucked up in their head. And they willing to die and uphold this. These hillbillies, hicks, or whatever you want to call them, subhumans will kill you. I keep telling folks how extremely dangerous they will continue to be as they watch their kingdom fall before their eyes. And then you got Mr. Coon, Super Coon, who proudly come out and uphold and tell them what their rights is and what they can do. And he fully support bigots and racists and all of this, all of this kind of stuff. I said, wow. This is what it led me to, my royal family. So I said, I'm going to present it to the royal family. It ain't really nothing I can read because you could just put two and two together. You know, they had um, a press conference about it and all of that, you know. So it is what it is, my royal family. So I just wanted to share this. And then I want you to do this. I want you to render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family. I thank you for your love and I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.